Now we bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, again, we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What a wonderful day God's given us. I hope we don't lose the greatness of the sermon this morning. To think of how many God projects, I like the way Brother Oliver said it, God projects that men arrange and people flock to, that God may not be in. He might be in some of them, but most of them I believe he's not in, these God projects. But the little uh, exodus or exits of 38 that aren't God projects he's in. I thought that was great. And that if we're not careful, the little uh, insignificant things that God is in in our lives we may miss while we're looking for great God projects that he's not in. Oh, how easy it is to miss what he's in. I pray God will help us. And I was thinking of something else while he was sitting, while we were I was sitting here on the platform. It's worth it coming to this church just to be here for the Sundays when Brother Oliver gets here. Ah, if you could feel what I felt on, <laughs> on this platform, even tonight, uh, just to hear Brother Oliver saying, anyway, that was my own personal feeling. I hope you felt it too. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to St. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. Chapter 10 and verse 10. St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I marvel, I have marveled over and over again how God arranges the music. Uh, to go with the message. It, they were singing the message tonight, and I'm thankful for it. Well, look at this. Uh, Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. What, uh, what is abundant life? That's what I want to look at a little bit tonight. What is abundant life? First of all, I want to say what it isn't. It isn't a life that's meant for our enjoyment. When we say abundant life, many times what we think of Ah, uh, is, well, what I want to say, what Adam had, where everything is perfect. Live in a garden, no storms, no earthquakes, uh, perfect home relationship, and uh, uh, how could you ask for anything more than what Adam had? And people say, well, I want to get back to Adam. I want to tell you, I want to have something better than Adam had. What Adam had will not get you through. Adam had everything that a heart could desire. He lived in a garden. He had a perfect life. There were no storms or earthquakes. Everything, he was, every, his working conditions were perfect. Everything was perfect. You can't think of anything that wasn't. And yet, and yet Adam did not have abundant life. To have abundant life, he would have had to have eaten of the tree of life, and he didn't do that. And he'd have never had abundant life until he did. So Adam was offered abundant life in the garden at, by eating of the tree of life. He didn't eat of it. He never had abundant life. That's what I want. That's what you can have. And we ought to, God made us to have more than what Adam had because Adam did not have abundant life. He was living, but he didn't have abundant life. He turned down the abundant life because it didn't appeal to the senses. The tree, of, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil appealed to the senses. The tree of life did not appeal. There's not a thing in the tree of life that appealed to the senses. He would have to have taken of that tree by faith. See this song we sang, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. You can see how one song right after another, God was fitting it into this. 
He would have had to have eaten of it by the tree of life because nothing appealed to his senses. He would have had to have taken it because God said there's life here and he had to believe God and he didn't do it. The tree of life had to be received by faith. And Jesus offers us abundant life, but, it's, but it also must be received by faith. It will not appeal to the senses. The richest man in the world without Christ cannot live the abundant life. He may have yachts and houses and lands and wealth abundantly and everything the heart can desire, but without Christ he'll never have the abundant life. Too often, too often life is gauged by the senses. We think we're having a wonderful life if our senses are being satisfied. The senses are a gift from God for our enjoyment of life, but they were never meant to be our guide. We too often gauge life like Lot and choose what we see. You take in Hebrews 11, these great heroes of the faith, they never made their choice by their senses. Not a one of them. Everything connected, I want you to know, everything connected with the kingdom of God is the abundant life. Everything in the will of God is the abundant life because there's eternity in it. Something that will last forever. The abundant life is God's life working in and through us. That makes me think I read something from Pope John Paul II, and this is what he says the abundant life, and I love it. The abundant life is the life that exceeds the dimensions of earthly existence because it consists in sharing the life of God. I love that definition. Let me read it again. The abundant life is the life that exceeds the dimensions of earthly existence because it consists in sharing the life of God. So everything in the will of God is the abundant life because there's eternity in it, something that will last forever. The abundant life is God's life working in and through us. All trials, all difficulties, all disappointments, that God ordains is the abundant life. I hope you get that. Every trial you're in, if it's ordained of God, every disappointment, every hardship, I want you to know that's the abundant life. It'll never satisfy the senses, but it will the soul. All trials and difficulties and disappointments when God is in it. That's why we can quote Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love God. All things, the disappointments, trials, difficulties, that includes them. Why? Because there's eternity in it. And that's why we can quote that scripture and say that all things work together for God. Because God's in it. The abundant life cannot be gauged by our senses. Only faith can see and know the abundant life. For instance, we look at the Apostle Paul. He lived the abundant life. Apostle Paul lived the abundant life. What kind of life was it? He was shipwrecked. He was stoned. He was beaten. He was naked. He was hungry. That was the abundant life. This is the man that can say rejoice always. When he talked about these things, he said, these light afflictions are far but for a moment. He said, and they work, these things work for us the more, the more and more exceeding and abundantly the things of God, the eternal life. That was the abundant life. Oh, and Jesus said he came to bring us the abundant life, but many times we get bogged down by our senses and think, oh, to live the abundant life is to have everything like Adam had in the garden. That wasn't the abundant life. It's still true today that the abundant life is the life, is a life for faith and not the senses. Although the senses can greatly enjoy the abundant life, eternal life does not mean just to live forever. It means to have God's life within us 
and we have eternal life within us because of Jesus Christ. Sinners may live forever in hell, but they don't have abundant, they don't have eternal life. Just because they're going to live forever, they, they don't have eternal life. John 17, 3 says, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. It's in our nature to interpret the word of God to satisfy our senses. Many times we interpret the Word of God immediately, something that satisfies the senses, we give it that interpretation. But eternal life is to have Christ, the Christ life within, and it shares His life. And then I, when we and I share His life, then I share His joys, I share His sorrows, I share His burdens, all that I'm sharing of Jesus Christ, that's the abundant life. <laughs> That's why some of you come to service and you get burdened down. You're sharing the burdens of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know you're sharing in the abundant life, although you feel terrible. Come on, stick with me. The abundant life of Jesus Christ. He promised this and you're sharing in the abundant life when you carry the burdens of Jesus. Although your senses, you may feel terrible. Like you could crawl under the floor and wish you could get away and all kinds of things happen to you and the abundant life is, man, the devil's trying to tell you maybe you're backslidden and all kinds of things about it when you're sharing the abundant life of Jesus. So, to have eternal life of Christ within us is to share his life, share his joys, his sorrows, his burdens. That's why, and I don't understand the mystery of burdens, in 2 Corinthians 1, 5, it says the sufferings of Christ abound. Paul says such strange things. Abound in us. The New International Version says like this, and I love it. For just as the sufferings of Christ fall over into our lives. The sufferings of Christ fall over into our lives. So also through Christ our comfort overflows and what we come out of that sharing, we're sharing his sufferings, then out of us comes comfort. Imagine. <laughs> where, do you, where can you comfort somebody when you've shared God's sorrow? In 1 Peter 4.13, says, Peter says, Rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. Only that individual is going to be a comfort to anybody else. Nobody else has any comfort to offer. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Oh, there's joy in the abundant life, but it's different from what the world offers. And I'm trusting that God will help us to not get turned aside by our senses, where they're given by God for us to enjoy, but not to guide us. And Jesus said, I've come that you might have abundant life, so be encouraged when he gives you the abundant life.